Hello guys, welcome back to day number 19 and happy Ganesh Chaturthi. We have already done a lot of progress. We already have finished procedures also. Uh, yeah, four modules are done. So now from today on we will start with this more Verilog features. So first of all, it is your conditional. So there we have this one. I have deal with one, one of my lecture, right? Uh, what these are and this is nothing but your if else statement and for this if else statement you don't need to use any procedural block because you write you know right for getting your if we need to write a procedural block which are always like inside always we need to write your if else but for any reason we if we don't want to use the always block or a procedural block and then also we need to use the conditional capability of our very log then we can try out this one and this is the pro of this uh, statement is that it is very easy in one line only you can write it like even develop one two is to one multiplexer but the problem is that it is tough to read you know i know and we can deduce that what is happening here but anybody who is very new to very long it doesn't make any intuitive sense that what is happening here because it is not a plain english text if we use if else and else then from our English knowledge only we can know hey we are what we are doing but here it is very tough very tough to tell what is happening here so just to revise ourselves I will do it again like what is happening here so see here this this is your condition so if it is raining this operator will imply if you are questioning that conditions right and after that the first one would be the result if the condition is true else if the condition is false then the second one here they have given many example and you can see using this you can also try to design a fsm finite state machine and this statement or this capability of Verilog can be used inside a always block or procedural blocks also but also can be used outside so that's why it's the advantage of this one so what we need to do now here what we need to do we have four unsigned bit unsigned input not bit but unsigned input okay and we need to compare or we need to find out which is the minimum of those these four the good thing is that this is unsigned so for unsigned if it is signed plus and minus are there then there are little difficult to compare both of these things like uh, two bits directly but if it is unsigned then you can directly use this operator which is supported in very you can directly use it and you can compare it so here you have eight bit four input you need to find out which one is the minimum one they have given us uh, here that hey you make two-way minimum circuit and then use that two-way minimum circuit for a four-way minimum circuits so what would be our algorithm here the algorithm would be we will first compare a and b a is smaller than b then we will select a else we will select b so this is one of your two-way minimum circuits two-way minimum circuits in another statement i will write c is less than d if this is true then c else choose d i need to save this two output to one of my wire or anything any variable so for now i'll decide something like t1 and t2 and in my third step i will do this i will compare t1 is smaller than t2 if this is true then select t1 all else t2 simple algorithm right so we will try to write this in our very low code so i'll come here and i'll write and this is becoming simple only three or four line code because we have this capability of very low like conditional uh, is called the exact name is uh, this one uh, ternary conditional operator i hope i am pronouncing is right but that's why it's very simple in one line if it is if else then you need to write at least two three lines right so let us do it so first of all i i will write a is smaller than b question mark now i need to save this to something so for example i am saving it at t1 equal to this and t2 equal to this so i'll get a or b depending on my condition i'll get c on d depending on my condition but the problem is that i don't know what are my t1 and t2 so i can assign them or i can declare them as a wire here right because we are anyway we are using this outside a procedure block so outside the procedure block it is all okay to uh, use a wire so we will use a wire here so i will define wire if you don't define and if you directly use it here then you will find the error in your very log that t1 and t2 is not different after that what we will do we will compare between t1 
T1 and T2 if T1 then select T1 else select T2 and semicolon and this thing will be stored in the output which is this output of mean so here I'll write mean equal to this one now one thing just observe here as we are not using any procedural block here so uh, these are all are where in our module we haven't explicitly mentioned they are where or register type but as we are not using a procedural block so we will make them as a where so I'll write here assign t1 and assign mean so tell me are we doing any wrong thing here we will get some 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 issue here just tell me are we getting anything yeah not related to any syntax error uh, related to some logic we are doing some error but okay let's submit and, and you will be clear actually I'll tell you how to verify your result or how to do the verifications to find out what error you are doing and how to solve it it's a very very important skill you need to learn and again with practice only you can learn there is no book no where it's written how to learn these uh, things yeah so see we are getting an incorrect right and in the incorrect uh, you can go through all the things but the best thing is the the best thing is to debug your code and that is just see the timing diagram so first of all what they are giving us this is their input a b c and d your a b c and d are not a one bit input they are eight bit input so in eight bit input you can i think hundred in decimal you can have more than hundred uh, of combinations so you can provide 11 12 13 99 anything but in first go what they are providing us they are providing us one two three four so from one two three four what should be the answer one is the minimum so we should get a one so here's in minimum output we are getting one their reference is also one so perfect here mismatch is zero but after that what is happening see at this position let me mark it here at this position they are giving 11 here two here three here four here so answer should be two they are having a 2 but we are getting a 0 here why we are getting a 0 here you can just go to the code again let me go to the code again you can see logically everything is perfect here but we are we are missing something here we are missing something in very log and that's why so how you can know it see you are getting 0 right you are getting 0 so probably uh, many time we get zero because see how we mention two in decimal sense how we write two we write two like this and then if it is a eight bit number so we will add six bit here right so probably something happened which just trimmed this one and zero and it's just stored one of the zero so that's why in the answer we are getting a zero this is not always the case G this is just a hint uh, you might get from the log you need to read all your log what is happening you need to read you need to see this uh, type of web from anything is happening and from your experience only like this is from my experience I have faced this error many times so I know if it is zero then probably in something is happening which just trimmed down my one zero and because here we have lot of zero so probably one of the zero got stored into our output or mean so that's why we are getting a zero and the thing is that yeah that is what the case here and if you just come here you will see see here we are storing t1 and t2 right you are doing operation on a and b and your a and b are of 8 bit but your t1 by default they are of 1 bit so for example here a and b in that waveform we had a equal to 11 b equal to 2 so this t1 actually storing your 2 but to store 2 it need to have 8 bit uh, yeah consider it's, it's 8 bit bit right but we have declared 2 1 as 1 bit only so that's why probably it is only storing one of the zeros that's why in the answer we are getting a zero so so to solve it what we need to do we need to declare our where same as our input or same the variable we are working on the same dimension so i have declared here t1 and t2 as 8 bit and now you will get for sure a perfect answer and see we get a success here uh, these are the input element now it got changed so here 1 2 3 1 is the minimum uh, in this location in this location 2 is the minimum so we are getting 2 in this location 11 12 13 uh, 3 is here so 3 is the minimum so that's a perfect thing so one problem is solved now let's go to the next problem for today and that is reduction so what's the need of reduction before i go there let me tell you something 
for example you have a gate here n gate and you have dot 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 hundreds of input mostly we don't have but consider we have a hundred of inputs all are of one bit inputs so what we are doing if we assign them as an a b c and d then what we need to do we need to do a bitwise n with b bitwise n with c bitwise n with, with d and so on we need to write 100 time right and why we are doing bitwise because a b c d are of one bit only and the main purpose of this n gate is to do bitwise and inside a input probably that input is of 100 bits so we need to do bitwise and bitwise or bitwise xor so this is the way only we can write in behavioral sense but it is again a time consuming and not efficient so to to eliminate that in very log what we have and that is called reduction operator so how reduction operator work for example i have an input which is of 100 bits and i want to do a bitwise and between all the bits it have so what i will do i will just write a n person here in the left side this is left side and anytime you write it it will become a reduction operator same only bitwise and don't get confused but for bitwise and we need two operand but for reduction operator we only need one operand so anytime you write n person and a operand here this will become a reduction operator and what it will do it will do bitwise and between all the bits and the final answer would be how many bits one bit only for example you have four bit number so how bitwise and done is between this and this so we'll do so zero and one what would be the result would be zero then zero and next bit one what would be the result again result would be zero and then zero and zero how to be the result be zero and this is your final answer and the same thing would be done using a reduction operator so four bit will be reduced to only one bit and there are many real life digital electronics example where or application where we need to use this uh, reduction operator for example today's practice only see here what we need to do Pre uh, parity checking is often used as a simple method of detecting error uh, if you have learned about communication systems so there we have many uh, code correction algorithm right so there we use this parity checking so in this problem what we need to do we have 8 bit input right so in 8 bit input we need to search for the parity like we have even number of 1 or odd number of 1 so here if we get even number of 1 then perfect else we will add a ninth bit of 1 I think that's only it's saying create a circuit uh, that will compute a parity bit of 8 bit which will add 9 bit to the byte we will use even parity uh, wh where the parity bit is yeah we can do XOR actually with XOR we can find out is it is even priority or not so let me give you a simple example of 4 bit how it is working XOR so for example we have this 1001 1, 0, 0, 1. so 1 and 1 XOR would be 1 I hope you remember your truth table of 1 uh, XOR and 1 and 0 this bit would be 1 and 0 again we'll get a 1 and then 1 and 1 so we'll get a 0 so which imply if even number of 1 are there then we'll get a 0 okay now let us just try again with this combination 0 and 1 will get a 1 1 and 1 will get a 0 0 and 0 will get a 0 you can see right okay ne again this is the even number so 1 and 1 will be 0 0 and 1 will be 1 and 1 and 1 will get a 0 so result is 0 so anytime you have even number of 1 in your input you will get a 0 and anytime we have odd number of 1 0 1 1 1 then what we'll ha having 0 and 1 1 1 and 1 would be 0 0 and 1 would be 1 let me do the some other arrangement of this odd bit so 1 and 0 will be 1 1 and 1 will be 0 0 and 1 will be 1 another thing like this example 1 and 0 you'll get a 1 1 and 0 you'll get a 1 and 1 and 0 you'll get a 1 so see anytime odd number of ones are coming you're getting a 1 anytime even number of uh, one you are getting you will get a zero so this is our task here so what we'll do it is very simple trust me it is very simple and we will just take this operator this is your XOR operator but if you use in the left side it will become a reduction operator and we'll do it in in 
and this thing will get assigned to your parity bit so this is your parity bit and let me assign it because i am writing it outside the procedural block so parity will become a where so this is the result and then semicolon so depending on our in if it is even we'll get a zero if it is odd number of one we'll get a one so submit so actually if we get odd number of one then our parity bit will become one and our number of one will become even so every time we'll have a even number of one only submit it and see we got a success i want to see the diagram uh, okay, timing diagram is not there i think they haven't provided so then we have this problem uh, reduction even wider so here we are doing nothing actually we are just doing that reduction operator in a hundred input gate so you have and get or gate and xor gate and you need to do it here this is your homework so i'm not gonna do it in our next class we will do this one a, com a combinational for loop